of the European Parliament who is prepared to break the law over this issue. That's enough introduction, I think. Molly Scott Cato. Oh, thank you for that, Rupert. No, no, I already decided it's fine. And thank you very much, Julia. It's absolutely brilliant to hear from you here and to have you with us here today. So, those of you who know me know that I'm an economist. So you can imagine how I feel about that absolutely appalling, embarrassing, shameful budget that we had the other day. And the fact that over there in the House of Commons, people who are supposed to represent us are debating a budget that did not even mention climate change once. Not once. As the Green, as the Green Party, we called for an emergency budget for the climate. That is the only thing that would have been responsible in this situation. But because of their friends in the fossil fuel industry who fund the Conservative Party, we have a government which is betraying us and has produces a budget with £30 billion pounds of extra road building and £3 billion just as a bung to the fossil fuel industry. It's an absolute disgrace. But I know that you're not here today for economic reasons. You're not here for political reasons. You're here because you feel a deep spiritual connection, I believe, with this planet. It's a deep love that, it's not that it's our life support system, it's not just that we completely depend on it. It's that we have a deep connection, a deep spiritual love for our planet, and that it grieves us deeply to see that our planet is being trashed day after day after day, that the species, our brothers and sisters that we share this planet with, are being killed. This is a, this is a, a massive bereavement. It's a mass extinction, but it's also a massive bereavement. But in our hearts, I believe we all feel, even those people who aren't here today, and that is why we must rise up. We must rise up to protect ourselves, future generations, but also the other species we share this planet with. Yeah. I'm a, a Quaker, and that gives me deep support on a spiritual level for this decision to take non-violent direct action. Because the Quaker testimony tells you that you must obey the law. But when the law takes you to a place where the inner voice, your deep inner voice, tells you that something is desperately wrong, then you are supported, supported by your own community, in taking non-violent direct action. And I believe I will be supported by Quakers across the country and that they will help to publicise what we're doing today. So let's join together. Let's work together in small groups. Let's build trust. Let's choose good targets. This isn't about a show. This isn't about posturing, this isn't about publicity, this is about taking action that will stop the industry and the economy that's destroying our planet and other species. We need to, we need to choose good targets. We know that in the 1990s the road building programme was turned around because of non-violent direct action. We know that fracking in Lancashire has been set back by years, saving masses of carbon dioxide from entering our atmosphere. We know we can do this, we need to be skillful, we need to be brave, we need to choose good targets. We can stop the way our economy is going. We can turn this around and we can save the planet. So, I say in closing, enough, enough of false words, enough of empty promises, enough of deceit and hypocrisy. It's time for action. Yeah.